Item 8, proclamation recognizing I Inspire Day in El Paso County. Holly Williams, Commissioner, Board of County Commissioners. Commissioner Williams. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor for me to read this proclamation. Proclamation re recognizing I Inspire Day in El Paso County. Whereas the Board of El Paso County Commissioners welcome the minority <clears throat> over representation subcommittee of the 4th Judicial District's Juvenile Best Practices Committee and the Educating Children of Color Summit to present their I Inspire Awards to five young people residing in the Pikes Peak region who have overcome adversity and inspire others to do the same. And whereas Zaire Crockett overcame adversity by having hope that he would one day be a part of a family after spending most of his life in foster care. He has dealt with his traumas layer by layer and has received academic awards and recognition, graduated from Mitchell High School, currently attends Pikes Peak Community College. He has a tremendous work ethic and mentors other young men who are in the foster care system and encourages them to never give up. And whereas Lazarius, Williams overcomes adversity by not letting autism stop him from achieving his goals. He is his sophomore class treasurer, was elected to homecoming royalty, and is a member of the junior varsity basketball team at his school. He inspires his classmates to pursue <coughs> their goals regardless of their circumstances in life. And whereas Shaw Paris Mobley has overcome adversity by staying positive and remaining focused on her goal of becoming a doctor. She has a 4.1 GPA at Doherty High School and started an organization called Dolls for Dolls, which provides dolls to girls with incarcerated fathers to help them through hard times. And whereas Jaden Nix has overcome adversity by maintaining sobriety and focusing on her schoolwork. Even though Jada's placement history in the foster care system has presented great obstacles, she is now stable and looking to graduate from high school. Jada will be the first person in her family to graduate high school. She inspires others to never give up and to believe in themselves. And whereas Christian Smith has overcome adversity by attending Mitchell High School, where he is a senior, the vice president of the Link Crew, a member of student government and captain of the cheerleading squad while helping care for his little brother and working to help the fam with family expenses as his father is terminally ill. Christian inspires others to give of themselves. He raises money for cancer and volunteers in the community whenever he can. Now, therefore, the Board of El Paso County Commissioners hereby recognizes January 17th, 2019 as I Inspire Day in El Paso County, Colorado, in honor of the five I Inspire Award recipients named above who have overcome adversity and inspired others to do this same. Done this 17th day of January 2019 at Colorado Springs, Colorado. The Board of El Paso of County Commissioners of El Paso County, Colorado, Mark Waller Chair, Lojinos Gonzalez Jr. Vice Chair, Stan Vanderwerf, Holly Williams, and Cami Bremer members, and attested to by Chuck Broerman, County Clerk and Recorder. Second. All right, uh, please state your name and you may begin. Thank you. My name is Tim Schutz. I am a district court judge uh, here in the community. I also uh, am the co-chair of the I Inspire Committee. I think we have a short video we'd like to share with you. Throughout middle school, I was in a special ed class. Um, I had a really hard time trying to learn. I, you know, I couldn't focus on work. Uh, I couldn't really communicate with other people, not even teachers, anything like that. I had an incredibly hard time learning disability. When I was little, my um, father went to jail, so I had to um, deal with that. I've been in foster care since I was like four. Not having a mother figure in my life, um, and recently, like four years ago, my dad came down with a um, terminal cancer. I stood up and then I told them that I have autism. I was getting all Fs and I was not doing my schoolwork and just skipping class, you know, doing 
them, what I shouldn't be doing. My family is not fully supportive. No, I thought I was going to be back at a treatment center or something like that. No. Um, yeah, when I was in fifth grade, yeah, that was, that was a mess then. Sometimes we don't always <clears throat> see kids in the best um, situations. And um, I think it's important to pause and recognize um, some of the unique challenges that um, kids who appear in front of us have and some of the um, incredible sort of inspirational stories that some of them have in terms of obstacles that they've overcome and things of that nature. That I wasn't the best student, um, so my dad really, he was kind of disappointed in me um, with really how I was like coming out, turning out to be. I just didn't want him passing without him not being proud, you know. It really, you know, the thought of it, just like him passing and just being disappointed in me would have really, like it almost hurts, like it kills. And it was kind of tough being younger and seeing everyone else with two parents and I only had one. Um, it was kind of, I kind of didn't understand and I was frustrated a lot, like watching my mom kind of struggle and um, being the eldest, I understood that like I had to be the, um, I had to help her out. I went back into foster care and that's what I've met my mom right now. Um, I, that, that's what, it, what changed for me, to be honest. She's the one that had uh, really tried to lead me, you know, down where I need to go. And she's the one that's helped me and inspired me. And, and her the whole family, too, has inspired me. You know, I just, one day I told myself, you know, this has to change, you know, I have, you know, we can't keep doing this to dad. I think it's really important to, to us um, who are um, challenged with the responsibility of helping kids through this process to, on the one hand, recognize um, the difficulties that they are facing, and yet at the same time also to, um, to recognize their potential and to, um, to try and hold them to a higher standard in a, in a way that allows them to believe in themselves. I'm going to become part of Rhyme Scene. Student Body Vice President. Dolls for Dolls, which is an organization that I came up with myself. Flight Commander in ROTC. I play basketball for Sierra High School. Millennium All-Stars. Vice President of League Crew. Theater Club. I think it's so often the source of failures that these kids have, <clears throat> have had negative experiences. Um, and, and ultimately don't expect more of themselves or of others because of the history. And if we can help them to elevate that expectation of themselves, I think that's really important. Right now I'm in college. I'm going to PVCC. I was at UCCS, but I'm going to PVCC now. My plan is to either go um, to college through an ROTC scholarship. When I graduate from high school, I want to go to North Carolina. I'm hoping to go to vocational school for next semester. Cosmetology. Or go to um, reserves and get my education through there and then right after I get my bachelor's I'm gonna enlist in the Air Force. I want to be the next Michael Jordan. If um, you've had somebody express confidence in you and you have a sense of who you are and and what you're about then it's, it's a lot easier to overcome those uh, inevitable failures that we all experience. Judge Schutz. Thank you. Uh, Chair Waller, Vice Chair Gonzalez, uh, Commissioner Vanderwerl, Commissioner Bremer and Commissioner Williams, um, thank you for this opportunity to recognize the youth of our community. I want to take some time to just briefly um, recognize uh, some of the other people who have been a part of making this event. This is our now second annual um, presentation. First, I want to recognize some of your employees. Um, County Attorney Polson was instrumental in getting this program off the ground um, last year. To my right is Karen Nord, um, co-chair of this committee. Um, there are also um, some other members of the committee here, Consuela Williams, um, Mary Kamenik um, and others who have um, really done the laboring uh, work in this project. They are um, excellent lawyers and ex excellent citizens of the community. You may remember that um, each one of the recipients who is recognized here today will be paired with a um, leader in the community in sort of a mentorship program. And I want to just briefly thank the um, individuals who have volunteered to serve as mentors. They are um, State Representative Pete Lee, um, City Councilman Richard Scorman, El Paso County Sheriff Commander, I believe is present here um, today, Cliff Nordham, Officer Jessica Kuhn with the Colorado Springs Police Department, and District Court Magistrate Francis Johnson. Your efforts, the collective efforts of those people that I have mentioned have given us the opportunity to recognize the achievements of these inspiring youth. And in recognizing them, we reinforce their good work. 
You know, I think all of us have um, been provided opportunities to succeed. All of us uh, face opportunities to fail. I would suggest some of us have received a few more opportunities to succeed than others. But regardless of where we come from, all of us can point to an event or a person who has made a difference for us. At some point in our lives, we have all benefited from an expression of appreciation for what we have done, and even more importantly, a statement of faith about who we can be. These events elevate our expectations of ourselves and of our future. Your collective efforts have provided us the opportunity to give that gift to these kids, and we thank you for that. We also need to thank these kids to recognize these young men, men and women. You know, I think sometimes the demands of our work, the pressure of our lives, and the hard decisions we have to make sometimes as leaders leave us tired and frankly sometimes a bit cynical. I sometimes hear those of our generation express skepticism about the character or abilities of our children and their generation. I must say, I believe that those statements candidly reflect more concern about our generation than about theirs. It is important for us as a community to pause and to recognize the incredible things being done by so many youth in this community. And this event made possible by these young men and women give us that opportunity. So in addition to thanking you, I wish to thank them for the inspiration and this reminder of their collective goodness. So at this time, what I'm going to do is call up each one of the individual recipients. We have a card and a modest financial stipend for um, each of the recipients. I'll ask them to stay up here, um, and then I understand that um, we'll have an opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, perhaps take a picture with you um, once you complete your interaction with them, um, if you have any questions of them or us. So let me start by recognizing the names, uh, individuals of those you've heard, and ask them to come forward. First, Zaire Crockett. Lazarius Williams. <laughs> Shaparis Mobley. <laughs> Jaden Nix. And lastly, Christian Smith. Before I step down, um, I did want to um, recognize two more people that I forgot to recognize, two of your employees. Um, that is Matt Steiner um, and Joe Yates. Um, they annually um, put together this video and take the time to go out and interview the kids and, um, and put together that great video that you saw. So thank you to you as well. Do you have any questions of the, um, any of us or of the um, individual recipients? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll bring it up here for questions and comments uh, at this time. Uh, Commissioner Williams. I'm, I'm truly amazed at all five of you. Um, let's see, the one who wants to go to North Carolina, right? Lazarius, you should consider University of Virginia instead. <laughs> 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 but, you know, if you get to North Carolina, I'm, I'll be really proud of you. So, but University of Virginia is my alma mater, so. Anybody else? Commissioner Vanderwerf. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, this is an inspiration to, um, uh, to see you up here working so hard to improve your own lives. And uh, I just think this is fantastic. First, I want to thank the Inspire team for making these opportunities possible. And you know, when you're a young person, it's, it, it can be tough. Uh, you're not sure who you're going to be. You know, you might have a lot of pressures in your lives. They could be family pressures. They could be school pressures. And it can be difficult. But one, some things that I know, it's never too late. It's never too late to believe in yourself 
and work to make your life better. It's never too late. If something happens in your life and you're 75 years old, it is not too late to make your life better. Uh, so it's awesome that you're doing this. And uh, I will make one other point, and that is never give up on yourself. Never give up. There's going to be failures in your life uh, uh, as you go forward, but all of us have those. We really do. Don't give up. Uh, kind of just work your way through that. Go. <laughs> what I like to do when I have a bad day is I go to sleep and I wake up the next day, and it's a new day, and I get to work on making my life better and the community better. So never give up on yourself. And once you've done that, go out in the community, go find other kids in the high schools, and inspire them to never give up, give up as well. So thanks very much for, for all of you doing what you're doing, and thanks to the Inspire team. I just think it's fantastic. Thanks. Commissioner Brimmer. I, I am inspired to the point of, um, of speechlessness um, by each and every one of you. And not only um, am I inspired by the adversities that you've overcome, but what I see is, is huge character being built through those. Um, and I'm just, I'm so very proud of each and every one of you. Um, I look forward to, um, to seeing you continue to contribute to, to our community or wherever you may be. You know, we need military service members, we need cosmetologists, we need basketball players. We need all of you to continue to um, build on that, that character that, that is becoming so strong and apparent and I know is there. I'm, I am just inspired by it. Um, carry that forward. Thank you. Commissioner Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and, you know, just like last year, this is outstanding and awesome. And it just, uh, you know, goes back to the character of our community, character of you for everything that you do. Uh, and, you know, I think this is a great example of what happens when you have people that are self-motivated and then meet the right encouragement and the right motivation that then helps them with that support network that you have. And when they come together, you can't be stopped. And the never give up, having those people around you that are there for you, uh, whether they were there originally or not, or new people that have come into your lives in some of your examples, when, you two, when those two great motivating factors come together, uh, you are unstoppable. So thank you and the best of luck in your futures. All right, my message to you, three simple words, stay after it. Take this positive experience that you have right now and build on it and stay after it to accomplish your dreams and goals. Uh, I think that's uh, you know, the, the best thing that you could do for all of the folks that um, work on this program and that, uh, that, that have invested so much in making sure that the youth in our community, community have the opportunities that, um, that maybe necessarily weren't there for them. And I think the best legacy you could leave them moving forward is staying after it. Keep working hard to accomplish all your dreams and goals. All right. Anything else? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Bremer. Aye. Commissioner Vanderwerf. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That passes unanimously. We'll stand in a brief recess to take a picture. Thank you.